Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, BSRT2 students. So prior to listening to my lecture, I hope you already uh, take a glance at your Moodle and observed our requirements prior to this lecture. So we have our activities that's posted. I hope you perform that. Ano? And assuming I also already check your attendance and welcome you once again into my class so good morning today this is a continuation of our discussion the last week so if you still remember last time we discussed the systems of measurement there we identified the base quantities the secondary or derived quantities and the special quantities and we already identified the standards of measurement the standard for mass this is in terms of kilogram the standard for distance is in terms of matter and of course the standard for time is of course second and we have different systems of measurement as we said we have the cgs or the centimeter gram and second we have the mks which is the meter kilogram and second and we have the british or the english system of measurement so this morning we will discuss another important topic which will pave the way for radiation physics and this is mechanics okay so if you still remember when you were in high school so you have defined mechanics as a branch of physics but before that i am going to read our introduction of course para diri ka mukhalasan and to keep you um, energetic because we will be talking about energy okay now that you have understood the various standards of measurements the derivation and the concept on mechanics will follow, which will enable you to prepare on the areas of radiological science. Again, medical physics includes the study of matter and energy, their interaction, which can be understood using the concept of a certain branch of physics, the mechanics. As far as I'm concerned, I already know that you were, when, when you were in high school, you already have your physics. Am I right? And you have defined that mechanics is a branch of physics that deals with the objects at rest, which is what we call statics, and objects in motion, which is what we call dynamics. So, kumusta ka mo dida? Are you in motion or are you at rest? Are you in statics or are you in dynamics? So, again... Mechanics is a segment of physics, and in the long run, physics is also a segment of science. Because when we say science, this is a body of knowledge. Okay, so there are different segments of physics actually. So this morning, we will tackle on mechanics because some other branches of physics are, are less important in radiological sciences ano? so physics is grouped as thermodynamics thermo meaning heat ano? optics which deals with the lights acoustics of course this is sound mechanics and electromagnetism electromagnetism probably we can talk about that this second semester especially on equipment maintenance and modern physics are branched into atomic and nuclear physics. So, ang aking mga, ang mga na-mention ko is for your information lang. Okay, so, for the discussion of mechanics, of course, we will be talking different variables here. Acceleration, velocity, motion, weight, momentum, work, power, and energy, so on and so forth. And... Uh, I know this is just a review from your ada ka na naman sir puro ka na naman review review ano okay so when we say velocity so it says here that the motion of objects can be described with the use of two terms either velocity and acceleration so velocity sometimes called speed 
This is a measure of how fast something is moving or more precisely the rate of change of position with time. As you can see in our equation, so we have the formula velocity equals distance divided by the time. Okay, so also it says here that the velocity of light, so this is more probably with application to radiological science, that the velocity of light is constant and is symbolized by small letter C, the speed of light constant in a vacuum, which is equivalent to 3.0 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Hence, electromagnetic radiation such as X-rays travel at the velocity of light. Okay, so that's one important factor to consider velocity in the branch of diagnostic radiography. Other than that, we can differentiate speed and uh, velocity by, by what? By giving appropriate quantities and terminology. Because when we say speed, this is a scalar quantity. And when we say vector, I mean velocity, this is a vector quantity. So let's define speed. So speed is the number of meters per second or kilometers per hour that a object, object is moving. And velocity requires specifying both speed and direction. So scalar in a sense that, again, speed only talks about how fast or how slow an object is moving. Wala pang direction. But velocity requires that there is a direction. For example, the storm signal, di ba? So, the, let's say for example, the, the storm is uh, moving at a speed of 140 kilometers per hour going to the east of northern Samar, Simbako. Mao iton, di ba? So, that's velocity. And the speed is, again, it's how fast the object or how slow the object is moving lang. There is no specified direction about that. Okay? Okay. Sige daw. How about acceleration? Acceleration, this is the rate of change of velocity with time. So, this is how quickly or slowly. So, the velocity is changing. So, because acceleration is velocity divided by time, the unit is meter per second squared. So, if the velocity is constant, acceleration is zero. Kasi, technically, again, acceleration is the change of velocity over time. Kaya, if, there, if the velocity is constant, so there is no change in velocity, so meaning the acceleration is zero. O, trohon ko la, ha? Acceleration, again, this is the change in velocity. Nagtika paspas -pas ba? Nagtika hinay ba? Sige daw, anong iyo speed yan? Ano ta, how fast? Nakaka-catch up ka mong lesson yan na nga nag, na, nag virtual class na la kita. Nagtika paspas -pas ba? Or nagtika hinay? So, kamo tot makaka-assess anong aton acceleration when it comes to our education nowadays. Okay, so velocity, this is in terms of meter per second, and we have another unit of time, which is in terms of second. So therefore, our SI unit for acceleration will be meter per second squared. Okay, now let's come to Newton's loss of motion. I, I know that you already have an idea about the Newton's loss of motion. So, in 1686, the English scientist Isaac Newton presented three principles that even today are recognized as the fundamental laws of motion. First, among these laws of motion is, of course, the law of inertia. Law of inertia. So, Newton's first law states that if no force acts on an object, so therefore, there will be no acceleration. In other words, if that object is at rest and there is no external force acting on it, so therefore that object will continue at rest. Parang ikaw sa disco, pag ayaw mo talagang sumayaw, eh, you will be continue at rest. Pero may mga forces ng mga friends mo, tara na, sayaw kita, sayaw na, sige na, killjoy ka man. So, there's an external force. So, nakakasayaw ka, di ba? 
So the property of matter that acts to resist a change in its state of motion is called inertia. So Newton's first law is thus often referred to as the law of inertia, which in other way around, it tells us that a body will remain at rest like what Anakon Gin mentioned kanina, or it will continue to move in a straight line with a con constant velocity in a, uh, unless acted by an external force. Okay, in a straight line, ha? Kasi if it's that an inclined, let's say for example, um, going downhill or uphill, mag-iibat imo na naini mo acceleration. Kasi there's the force of gravity. So again, uh, an object will continue moving in a straight line. For example, ito na nakita aton illustration. So typically ini nananabo para mga estudyante nga nabiyahe from Katarman going to UEP na nasa kain tricycle. So imagine kamo nasa kay kamo in tricycle tapos smooth sailing man lang iyo biyahe and all of a sudden an iyo driver tigda nga nagprinot. Oray pa naman na bunggo. So what will be your tendency? Diba you tend to be lurched forward or you tend to be forced forward? Ah, manong! Mm, ayun. Pero dahil eh, may mga estudyante talaga nga waray magprinuhi kuya tungod yan iya crash na katun iya atubangan iya harapan so na tend to to be forced forward. Diri na ito law of inertia, law of kaharutan ito. Joke. Okay, what I'm trying to say here is the pagprino mao ito an na no, unforced naging applied ni manong driver. Tapos si ikaw, instead nga at rest ka lang, tungod nga nag-force, okay, so na, na, na push forward ka nga to, ha, atubangan ni eh, imo crash. Gusto mo dan naman yun eh. Okay, the property of a body that causes it to remain at rest or to maintain a constant velocity is called inertia or the mass. So, in other words, we can say that inertia, in other way around, in other terminology, this is the mass. Inertia and mass are the same thing, but the word mass is much more commonly used. It is more difficult to accelerate some bodies than others. Those which have more mass are harder to accelerate. So, if you compare matambok versus hugos, Hin o daw lahaira, it pas pas dumalagan. Sige daw, can anybody tell me? Of course, you can say, mas pas pas dumalagan ang hugos. So, there is no discrimination naman din niya aton, uh, in aton lecture, di ba? What I'm trying to say is, the more massive an object, the, 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 the lesser its its acceleration. By the way, before ako makalimot, balikon ko la si acceleration. Acceleration can be of two forms. Positive, nagtika paspas, ano? So that's positive acceleration. Nagtika hinay, acceleration din ba 'yon? Yes sir, acceleration din 'yon because that is only a negative acceleration. Deceleration ang tawag, ano? So, pag constant and velocity, nano siya? Zero to acceleration. Okay, there is no change. Okay, so balikon taha, the more massive an object, the more mabugat an object, the harder is it is to accelerate. Aside from our example, the mahugos versus matambok, so we can also compare that to two different types of radiation. S let's take for example, we have a particulate radiation, specifically alpha, which is massive. It has mass of 4 AMU versus X-ray, an electromagnetic radiation, which is massless. So, hino is it mas pas pas magdalagan kaya alpha or X-ray. So, Techni technically, we can say that X-ray travels faster than alpha because alpha can only travel at a span of 5 cm whereas X-ray travel at the speed of light, again, that is 3.0 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. 
Ganon. So, velocity is one of the primary characteristics to distinguish different forms of radiation. Okay, so that's the law of inertia. And in other way around, we can call it the mass. The second law of motion is the law of force, which Newton's second law is definition of the concept of force, which is the force that's symbolized by capital letter F that acts on an object is equal to the mass that's symbolized by small letter M of the object multiplied by the acceleration that is sim uh, symbolized by small letter A. So again, force equals mass times acceleration. The question is, what is the SI unit for force? Because we have not yet discussed that the last week. Okay, so since your mass is expressed in kilogram, again, sorry, if your mass is expressed in kilogram as it is in uh, mks and your acceleration is expressed in meter per second squared, so that will give you an SA unit of Newton. But if, unit, if your units are expressed in CGS, in centimeter, gram, and second, for example, your mass is in terms of kilogram, your distance or your acceleration is in terms of centimeter per second squared, so your unit for force will now become dyne. So these are two different units of measurement for force. So now, we said last week that pound, although this is mass, but it says here that pound is the British unit force or the basic unit of force in British. Okay? Okay. So, tigam ni ha? That force is expressed in Newton. And the derivation for Newton, if that is again in MKS, is kilogram meter per second squared. If that is in CGS, that will be centimeter or, or gram centimeter per second squared. Okay, there you have it. Now, let's take this example. What net force must be exerted on a 70 kilogram sack of potatoes to give it an acceleration of 3.5 meter per second squared. Take note that all of your units are expressed in MKS. So, una-una, kailangan paprehasit imo systems of measurement in a typical problem, uh, problem. Kasi other than that, we have to convert one unit to another. Okay, so... So, again, the formula for force is meter, uh, meter, mass times acceleration. And, para mas klaro it at ton explanation, so, I ask help from Mr. Calculator. So, on your right side, makita ka mo, may calculator kita, no? So, let's take the problem again. So, what net force must be exerted? on a 70 kilogram sack of potatoes to give it an acceleration of 3.5 meter per second squared. So the formula again is force is equal to mass times acceleration. Our mass is 70 kilogram times our acceleration which is 3.5 meter per second squared and that will give you 245, again, do not forget that there should be a unit. And our unit for force is, nano to? Very good. So that will be in terms of Newton. So therefore, our answer again is 245 Newton. Palakpakan para mga BSRT2 students at UEP. Ang gagaling, di ba? So parehas kan sir. Charot. Hinidwat is sir. Parayaw nun. Okay, so sunod, we have the law of interaction. So this is the third law of motion. So Newton's third law of motion, the action-reaction, states that for every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. Action was a word for force. 
So which means that whenever one body exerts a force on a second body, the second body exerts a force back on the first which is equal in the magnitude and opposite in direction. So, parehas init na ikita natin ha example, like for example, tikang kamuhalaw ang naggawa na mahawas kamuhan motor, ano, nalipat ako kahit motor di dia amon scooter. So, you exert a force nga ma How as ka barko? Barko talaga. So, there is an equal force that is exerted on the opposite object. Okay, so ganun it aton law of action, reaction. Kumbaga, ik, dapat kung crush mo it imo crush, crush ka gihapon sa imo crush. Nakuha. Kasi there is a law of interaction. Okay, so for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, so there you have it, our laws of motion. So, Trujunta daw, let's have a review. So, first law, we have the law of inertia, in which a body at rest will continue at rest, or a body in motion will continue moving in a straight line with a constant velocity unless they are acted by an external force. So that's the law of inertia. Second law, we have the law of force, which states that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And the third law, which is the law of Action reaction or the law of interaction states that for every action there is equal but opposite reaction. So these laws of motion are fundamentally accepted and they are considered the fundamental laws of motion. Okay, so let's move on to other uh, important uh, aspects of mechanics. Next we have weight. So as we said before, weight and mass are two different aspects. When we say weight, this is a force and an object caused by the pull of gravity. Kaya nga sabi natin last week that your mass is the same here on Earth as well as your mass on the Moon. Whereas yung weight, it depends upon the force or the pull of gravity. So experiments have shown that objects that fall to the earth accelerate at a constant rate. This rate termed the acceleration due to gravity and is represented by small letter g is 9.8 meter per second squared on earth and that is 1.6 meter per second squared on the moon. So mas maliit yung acceleration due to gravity constant on the moon kasi nga mas malayo na siya sa center of the gravity. Any objects that has no forces other than gravity acting on it is said to be a free fall. Whatever it is moving upward, downward, or in any direction. So, weightlessness observed in outer space is attributable to the absence of gravity. Okay, kasi malayo na siya sa center of gravity. Now, my question is, what If you are at the center of the earth, sabi natin doon ang center of gravity. So, what will happen to your weight? Okay? Isip, isip. Okay, thus, the value of gravity in outer space is zero. Mm -hmm. The weight of an object is equal to the product of the mass and acceleration due to gravity if we can if we are going to convert this into formula we can say that weight or w equals mass times acceleration due to gravity constant okay sige nga let's say for example you are going to compute your weight here on earth so that's mass times acceleration due to gravity constant Let's take for example, sige daw, pera it imo timbang in terms of kilogram. Let's take for example, ako nala ako, sige, kaya dari manak nakita ha iyo, sige, akong timbang in terms of kilogram is 58 kilograms, gaan or bugat. 
Hmm, don't say bad words. Okay, mass is 58 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity constant. So, given the constant proportionality, 9.8 meter per second squared. So, the weight, my weight here on Earth is 568.4. What is our unit? Very good. So, that is Newton. So, what about on the moon? Okay, erase, 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 erase. So, what about on the moon? We said that the acceleration due to gravity constant on the moon is equivalent to 1.6 meter per second squared. So, what will be my weight on the moon? As if naman makakadto ako ha moon. So, 92.8. Newton. Okay, so there you have it. Kasi malayo tayo sa center of gravity when we are on the moon. Okay, so any questions? Ay, salamat. Tama tatak mga gustong estudyante. Waray pakiana. But if you have questions, so here are the following ways in which you can ask me. Okay, first you can reach me through our group chat in facebook messenger do not hesitate to ask me questions so i i can give questions i mean questions also and if you have questions i wish i can give justice to your question by responding um or eliciting answers from me which we soothe from your expectations i know another way is of course in our moodle in our UEP e-learning platform. That's the, the, the very important um, way in which you can we, we can interact with each other. Second, uh, third, you may uh, ask your question, of course, in this uh, YouTube video. You can key in your, you may comment your question. And of course, for those students who may be Using the asynchronous learning, meaning the offline or kasi may mga online and may mga offline. So for the for the as, asynchronous for through municipality link, of course you may reach me through my personal um, phone numbers. Do not hesitate, of course, because sabi nga natin no student will be left behind. Bahala ka mo kami, makabot na kami habulan. Hika mo kay tungkod nga hesit, hesitant ka mo mag-ask ka ako ng question. Tama, babayaan ka mo nga ni. Ano? Okay, so let's move on. Now we have momentum. So the product of the mass of an object and its velocity is called the momentum. Represented by small letter P. Kung may mood niyo, there is an arrow above the letter P. To designate that momentum is a vector quantity. Okay, so this is equivalent to mass times the velocity. So the greater the velocity of an object, the more momentum the object it possesses. So there na lang go deeper with the impulse and momentum because I already know that you have already discussed this in your physics. Of course, when you were in high school or in other subjects, I know you already discussed the impulse and momentum. Okay? And momentum has... Um, di man siya ganun ka significant ni sa radiological science. Ano? Okay. So we have work. Work done on an object is the force times the distance over which it is applied. So in mathematical terms, the unit of work is in terms of joules. Trongkola ha? So we have the formula work equals force times distance. And we already know. Sabi natin kanina that the S a unit for force is ano nga yun? Very good. That is in terms of Newton. So, Newton times meter. So, that will give you Joule. So, halimbawa sa problem, the given units lang are the mass and acceleration. Tapos, there's a distance. So, this is, this is the derivation. 
if the problem has units in terms of mks meaning that is in the mass is in kilogram distance is in terms of meter and uh, acceleration is meter per second squared so therefore one kilogram meter per meter squared per second squared is equivalent to one joule Okay, and kanina sabi natin that if the force is expressed in CGS or the centimeter gram and second, sabi natin kanina that will be dyne, di ba? One gram centimeter per second squared is one dyne. So halimbawang, in a problem given is also centimeter, so therefore one dyne centimeter is now what we call the erg. ERG. Dari nala ako magsugad ng urge. Kaya bayan ba yung iba't iyo huna-huna. So, that's the erg. So, in other words, one erg is equivalent to one gram centimeter squared per second squared. Okay. Tigam na ito niyo ha. Kaya bayan ako mag-exam or maghataghin chapter test. Uy! Next week. So, kailangan may dinan niyo may babaton. Okay, let's take this example. Calculate the work done by an ambulance attendant who pushes a patient on a gurney with a horizontal force of 25 newton for a distance of 3 meters. Any volunteer nga magsosolve? Of course, derito natin may himo yan na mag-volunteer, volunteer. So, ikaw mo nalang magsolve, di dahi balay because... Okay, so gamit si calculate. Okay, my dear students, gamit si calculator on the right side of your screen. So, remember our formula for work? That is force times the distance. And in our problem, the force is equivalent to how much? Okay, very good. It's 25 Newton. Times our distance is? Very good. 3 meters. So, it will give you? 75 and what is the unit now so newton meter or that is very good that is 75 joules okay so palakpakan utaro palat akong mga very good na bsrt2 students okay so now let's move on i hope nakukuha gihapon niyo at atong discussion so, let's move on. Okay la ka mo dida? Okay la, okay la. Sige. Okay, let's move on. Power. So, another variable in a uh, branch of physics, which is mechanics, is of course the power. Power is defined as the work performed over time. Power is defined as work performed over time. And, uh, ay na to, nawara na ako. Nagunan akon ko ah, nag nag nagatrasan akon slide. Okay, power is also the rate at which energy is used for expended. So tigam ni ha because later pabalikon nato ni power based on the discussion of energy. Since work done results in energy being transferred from one system to another. Okay, class. Tigam ni that the SA unit for power is joule per second because work is joule and the time is second. Joule per second or we now have the watt. Okay? But the British unit of power is horsepower. Small letter H and small letter P. HP. Dari Harry Potter. Horsepower. Okay, so 1 HP is equivalent to 746 watts. Pero ato 746 watts. Okay, very good. Okay, again, so power is the work performed over time. Okay, so let's take this example. A radiographer lifts... A 0 0.8 kilogram cassette from the floor to the top of a 1.5 meter table with an acceleration of 3 meter per second squared. What is the power exerted if it takes 1.2 seconds? Sige nga, answer. Pera? Of course, dari pa natin makukuha agad-agad it answer because this is a multi-step problem. Which means, 
we cannot get uh, one variable automatically without finding other variables. What I'm trying to say is, in this problem, first we must find the force. Another we have to find for work. And after that, finally, we can find for the power. So, tigam ni ha? First, kailangan natin bilang on he force. And the force, the formula for force based on the uh, Newton's laws of motion is mass times acceleration. So, to, tawagun tayo na he Mr. Calculator. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Calculator. So, on your right side again of your screen, may kita natin calculator. So, unat, kuha on natin he force. So, tigam ni, that force is equivalent to mass times acceleration. In the problem, our given mass is 0 0.8. Sorry, butan ko lang 0 para dere ka ma confuse. 0 0.8 kilogram times our acceleration is 3 meter per second squared. So, therefore, our force for this problem is, okay, 2.4, what is the unit? Very good, 2.4 Newton. So, the second variable is we have to find for the work. So, remember that work is equal to force times the distance. Okay, so, our force again is 2.4 Newton. So, our distance now is... 1.5 meter okay so we will multiply 2.4 by 1.5 that will give you 3.6 so what is our unit very good so that's 3.6 joules now we will find for the power so power is work over time so 3.6 divided by 1.2 so no 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 3.2 3.6 divided by 1.2 so, for this problem, our power is 3, again, what is the unit? Very good. So, 3 watts. Palakpakan otro para ta atong mga BSRT2 students. Magaleng, magaleng. Bisan virtual la, di ba? Pas pas gihapon, makakuahin mga uh, answers para mga problem. Yun. Okay. So, any questions? Of course, dari kumot mababaton. So, pakianan nala ako na. Nakon mga na-mention ng mga paagi para makabaton ako ha iyo. Okay, let's move on. We have energy. So, there are many forms of energy. The law of conservation of energy states that energy may be transformed from one form to another, but it cannot be created or destroyed. So, which means... The total amount of energy is constant. So we have an example here, electrical energy converted to light and in other way it is converted to heat and into electric bulb. Sa X-ray tube, there are tendencies na nagiging ganun yan. So um, we apply, um, let's say for example, electricity in terms of voltage and uh, MA or milliampere. And then... There is the thermionic emission, the emission of electrons by application of heat. Then these electrons will now become projectile electron that will interact with the target atom. No? And these L, uh, when, there, when, when these interactions happen, so we will now have an X-ray. Okay. Sige. But our discussion, since we are on mechanics, we are after the motion or the re at rest so we will discuss two primary forms of energy una we have the kinetic energy okay so the unit of energy and work is the same the joules sabi nga natin kanina sa power so parehas it eras diba so it is defined okay work and energy are uh, intimately related to one another work done on or by a system only when energy is transferred into or, or out of the system so do not forget that the SI unit for energy is also the same for the SI unit of work which is very good that is joules so utrong ko laha din sa atong discussion we are dealing with mechanics we are dealing with motion or rest. We are dealing with statics or we are 
with the dynamics. So, duduhat aton energy na yung papag We have kinetic and we have potential energy. So, let's discuss kinetic energy. Okay. So, two forms of mechanical energy often are used in radiologic science. Kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy associated with the motion of an object as expressed by the following formula. Ke, kinetic energy is 1 half m times velocity squared. So, before ako maghatagin problem, so, sa x-ray production, especially when it is with the interaction na, no? It is with the ionization. Okay, so, um, particulates uh, at subatomic particles can, can cause ionization only in one condition if they possess kinetic energy because at rest, they are not capable of causing ionization. Kaya, usang nga importante nga aspeto, why do we have to explain kinetic energy in our subject as future radiologic technologists? Because we need kinetic energy for interaction, radiation interaction. Okay, sige. Now, let's take this problem. So, what is the kinetic energy of a 50 kilogram athlete that run at a distance of 3 meter at 10 seconds? 30 meter, by, so, sorry. 30 meter at 10 seconds. So, I'm going to call Mr. Calculator again. There you have Mr. Calculator on the right side of your screen. Okay, so considering the velocity muna, di ba? Because the formula for... Uh, Kinetic energy is one half m or one half of the mass times the velocity square. So we have to find for the velocity. So again, velocity is the change of distance divided by time. So 30 meter divided by 10, parang very elementary, very basic. Ano? So our velocity is 3 meters per second. So, raise to 2, 3 times 3, parang very basic na talaga. So, that will become, our V squared is 9. So, we have to find the 1 half of our mass. Huwag nyo nang gamitin ng calculator. 50 divided by 2, that's 25. So, therefore, 25 multiplied by 9, that will give you, okay, so our kinetic energy for this problem is 225. What is our unit? Very good. So, 225 joules. Palakpakan para mga BSRT2 students. Okay. So, may pakiana. Otrohon ko. Diri ko pat mababaton personally. Okay. So, next we have the potential energy. So, ito muna imod nga illustration that is a typical example of potential energy in our daily life. Okay. Nung ma-fall ka sa kanya, kasi wala naman siyang pakialam sa'yo, so that's potential energy. Joke lah, ha? So, potential energy is the stored energy of position or configuration. So, gravitational potential energy is given by the following formula. PE equals MGH mass acceleration due to gravity constant with a value of 9.8 meter per second squared and the distance. Okay, let's take this example. Hindi yan. A radiographer holds a 6 kilogram x-ray tube 1.5 meter above the ground. So, what is its potential energy? Okay, so, okay, so given the formula again, PE equals mass times acceleration due to gravity constant times the height. So, we have the mass which is equivalent to 6 kilogram times the acceleration due to gravity constant which is a value of 9.8 meter per second squared times of course the distance which is 1.5 meter. So, that will give you 88.2. What is our unit? Of course, that will be in terms of joules. Very good, very good students. Thank you very much. Sana nakakuha ka mo. Bisan medyo paspas. Ano? Papaspas na kayo. Time kay sayang load na ito. Charot. Then again, balitaw. Uh, thank you so much for bearing with this discussion. Okay. Let's move on. 
Finally, we have heat. Bakit napasok dito si heat? Kasi sa next semester, we will have the equipment maintenance. And one of which is kukunin natin yung heat units ng ating x-ray tube. So, heat is a form of energy that is very important to radiologic technologists. Excessive heat, a deadly enemy of x-ray tube, can cause permanent damage. For this reason, the technologist should be aware of the properties of heat. Heat units. So, heat units, fast forward, para sa second semester, is also expressed in terms of joules. Okay, heat is the kinetic energy at the random motion of molecules. So, isang application, that is why, kaya may panlaban tayong air-conditioned kasi we have to prevent heat units na maghataas. Or kung mataas man, kailangan makompensate naton through air-conditioned x-ray room. Ano? Okay, other than that, the more rapid and disordered the motion of molecules, the more heat an object contains. In physics, the heat unit or the unit of heat that is in calorie is defined as the heat necessary to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. The same amount of heat will have different effects on different materials. And finally, heat is transferred by conduction. What When we say conduction, this is the transfer of heat through material or a conductor. Okay. We have convection. This is a mechanical transfer of hot molecules in a gas or liquid from one place to another. And of course, we have the thermal radiation. So it is the transfer of heat by emission of infrared radiation. So the reddish glow emitted by hot objects is evidence of heat transfer by radiation. An X-ray tube cools primarily by radiation. So we have thermal cation. Kaya may dayala oil number 5 tayo sa X-ray tube. Thermal cation, so we absorb natin ang heat because sa X-ray tube out of the 100% projectile electron, alam nyo bang only 1% or less than that is converted to X-ray and 99% of them are converted to heat. Kaya ganon yon. Okay, so nanu pa? Okay, that ends my lecture for today, and I hope. You have learned something from our discussion, kahit virtual class lang muna tayo. Okay, so other than that, if you have questions, again, alam nyo na kung paano kayo magtatanong. So, next, meet, next week we will have, or we will discuss about the atom. So, mag-prepare na kamo pagbasa. Advanced reading na tayo. And, um, do not forget pala that we have uh, chapter tests posted in your model. Okay? So, that would be all. Thank you so much for listening and see you next week. Bye-bye!